anyway, just so that we can use that face, welcome to the Mellow Podcast. I'm Maleficent, and this is far as red. She's been pulling that face all night. <laughs> I'm just going to keep talking, so we have to use that. Uh, tonight, we are talking about conventions. Mm -hmm. Just really in general. Things that we like about conventions and we don't like about conventions and our favorite conventions. First conventions? Yeah, why not? I mean, but firstly, why are we talking about conventions? Well, because we recently went to one where Burris had her first table, mm. and I went with her. As an assistant. Yeah. Mel like was a very aggressive assistant. She was like, you need to talk to people, and I didn't want to. Uh, yeah. I... <laughs> I, I gave her a whole lecture on the fact that you have to engage with people to trick them into, like, you know, buying your shit. Because, like, the whole shoplifting thing. If someone talks to you, you're much less likely to steal from them. And if someone talks to you, you're more likely to buy from that them. That is not the like, way you phrased it. You said that I was manipulating people into buying from me. Okay, but you reacted very badly. I was. I'm, that's still what I'm saying. I'm just not using because the word. Because it is a bad thing to do. <laughs> that's how sales work. Well, I anyway. don't like that aspect of sales, Mel. <laughs> well, look, that's fair. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> uh yes that was the plan and we were like well when we come back like we'll while it's all fresh in our mind the the convention experience like from a new angle we'll record uh, an episode about it and it's been four weeks <laughs> i think um well yeah it's like uh, obviously life kind of got in the way um but i think it is also worth talking about the like convention in COVID as well like kind of the, the just like a brief overview of like what it actually looked like um, because it was different to any kind of convention that we've been to before. Mel and I have both been to a number of conventions in the past, but this was uh, obviously one that took place at the start of March. I had to think about dates then. Uh, so about three weeks ago, um, and it was organized into sessions. So an, a morning and an evening session. Well, when I say morning, I mean like afternoon session. Um, where people would purchase tickets either all day or they would purchase them for different sessions um, for both Saturday and Sunday. Uh, and then they would have that four-hour period in order to walk around uh, and do their thing to try and, like, uh, limit numbers for certain amounts of time and all of that kind of thing, which made sense in theory. But this was also a small pop-up convention. So we went to the Oz Comic Con pop-up convention in Sydney, which is the first kind of thing of its kind, first real uh, convention for Australia to come back, uh, because Australia's been coping fairly well with the whole COVID situation. Um, but this is the first kind of thing to come back from it. And it was interesting to say the least not in a bad way in like a in like a, i could see how this would work kind of way but there are some things that didn't quite work yes and we're not going to trash talk them so. no um i think it'll we're be interesting exactly about what they did but um avcon is doing the same ow, uh about the same thing they're doing sessions when they come back in september july <laughs> well <laughs> we got that one wrong <laughs> you mm. got that one wrong don't drag me into this when i say we oh. i mean me i mean like <laughs> the royal we <laughs> that usually means because you're including everyone but fine it's whatever it's whatever no i thought the royal we is specifically when like royalty talks about themselves and they say like we are not amused kind of thing when they say we they mean i is that not what that means i mean i've always thought of it the other way around like you know it was like meant to be the general populace like we need to change is everyone not just the royal them wedding. in particular but i mean the i could royal... be entirely wrong i can see how that you could be either wrong. way you are wrong. Hey, Royal don't get so happy, happy for plural. calling me wrong. All right. <laughs> I'm not happy that you're wrong. I'm happy that I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
is the use of a plural pronoun to refer to a single person who is a monarch. Um, I am not a monarch, but I still use it all the time because I think it's fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So also, I, I will just say that the this particular phrase, I'm not happy that you're wrong, but I'm just happy that I'm right, is essentially the epitome of our relationship. Like... <laughs> <laughs> just about sums it up i think that's probably what we should have called the podcast <laughs> we 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 no, I, this isn't a you I'm, I'm not happy that you're wrong i'm happy that i'm right the podcast oh my god it should be our tagline though mellow podcast <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway. apparently we're delirious. This is great. <laughs> but yes, um, so Avcon is Adelaide's uh, anime and video games convention that's taking place in July. Uh, so about three months from now, four months, three months. I don't know. I can't, don't actually know mass. I've never learned it ever in my life. Didn't definitely didn't go to uni to study it. Um, also, time <laughs> means nothing. Also that too. Um and it'll be interesting to see that because they also have uh, limited availability for like the day pass option. So um, uh, like a lot of the, uh, the kind of the part that would make it hard is that when you have two different types of tickets, if you have an all day and you have a session, how do you manage who has what with however they do it? Like they had uh, armbands for Oz Comic Con. Um, but for Avcon, they normally do badges. So it'll be interesting to see mm -hmm. how they'll manage that, whether they'll do badges, whether they might just go to wristbands. They've also moved location. Uh, so that'll be different as well. People won't really know the layout as well, but it's interesting. Um, and it is good, of, obviously, that they're looking out for the safety and, consider and considerations for the general public's well-being, which is great too. Um... I am just sad that it won't be at the convention center because it's a really good spot. It's a really good spot. Mm. Hotels all around. You mm. just fucking walk outside and then you go next oh, door. Yeah. It's too good. One of my favorite things about Avcon, the like, not that's one of my favorite things about Avcon that's not part of the actual event because there are so many good things about Avcon is that it's right in the middle of all these hotels and there's like always this like sense of community I feel because a lot of the time we have friends and we will like stay. Mm. And it's like, ah. Oh. But we're not gonna do that this time. It kind of feels like a like mini C B D takeover whenever yeah. it's on because like you have a whole bunch of people around you, even though it's your hometown, you're still like kind of taking it all over it just it's just fun um but obviously that won't be quite the same this year but also like fucking what has been in the last 12 18 months you know <laughs> what has been the same but yeah uh that is essentially the current climate for conventions but we've obviously been to quite a few uh what do you think would be your well, first off, what's your first convention? We Avcon. know what your latest is, but what's your first one? Avcon. Hmm. How long ago? Two thousand and nine. Oh, holy shit! <laughs> nice work. Wait, actually, you tell me about yours, and I'll look through my photo albums, and I should be able to find the first time. <laughs> nice uh my first convention was in 2012 it was avcon i was living literally across the road from the convention center uh so it was the best time to go there um i'd never been to one before and i went there with my cousin for literally a day and was like hi i would like to come back and i would like to wear cosplay and i would like to go into everything because uh, it was a really great experience. But I don't think I've spoken long enough for Mel there. I can't tell. I really can't tell. I think it might have actually been 2010. Maybe okay. 2010, which is still 11 years ago. Yeah. Wow. Hello. And I think I've been to Avcon every year since. Yeah, that makes sense. Because it's the local one. Yeah. It makes sense. Oh, uh. Fine. 
so we all, yeah, obviously we know what our latest one is, but if you had to rate them, what would you imagine is your most favorite and least favorite? It's hard. It is hard. We didn't agree on this as a topic. Well, you did. You literally no, said most and least favorite. No, I meant um like least and most favorite stories, oh. not conventions. Oh well, now I've gone too far, but we're gonna do it anyway. Uh, okay. Just I have to really calm down. Calm down. Uh. Just to, to save Mel some thinking while she just has a bit of a crisis, apparently, with her face. Um, my most favorite convention is always PAX. Um, I think because it is a combination of being out of state, because it is nice to get out and do something different. I really love making PAX kind of like a traveling weekend where you go out and you just generally go and enjoy Melbourne for a while where we don't live. Um, and also that PAX is three days and I feel, I know a lot of people are different in this respect, but I find that I can fill those days with things. Um, you know, like you can go and wander through the gaming halls and you can go back and you can kind of see new things every day. Whereas with a lot of other conventions, it's mainly just exhibitor halls and then you have like panels and side rooms and stuff. Like there's a little bit more of a show there, I suppose. Um, my least favorite, and this is purely entirely from a locational thing, uh, is Supernovas. So Same. I've been to, uh, <laughs> I went to the, no, I actually can't. I feel like I've been to another Supernova, but I definitely have been to the Adelaide Supernova, uh, which takes place in the showgrounds. Not only is it also in November where it gets a lot hotter than it is during the rest of the year, like most of the Australian conventions are from between March and up until about end of August, which is like the perfect time for conventions because it's not too hot. It's not, well, it can actually get quite cold, but that's okay because you're in a convention hall with thousands of people, so you don't feel cold. <laughs> it's also Australian cold, so that never gets very low anyway. Mm. Um, so yeah, best time to go through during that period, but Supernova in Adelaide is in November. It's also located in the Wayville Showgrounds, which essentially is a giant shed, which means that when it is hot, it is hot. It is also an awkward place to, to like get to. Um, the parking is quite expensive and also hard to get. Um, and just generally it's not, it's not as, I feel like supernovas are more focused on, and Oz Comic Con is like this as well, but I feel like supernovas are a lot more focused on like the celebrity experience. Whereas I more want the community experience, like when places have, I know that I just said PAX was my favorite and it doesn't have an artist alley, but I really enjoy yeah. artist alleys. Um, but at least with PAX, you feel like you're interacting instead with businesses and you're interacting with like developers and all of that kind of thing. There is still that sense of community that you can also get from say like an Avcon or I hear that Smash is very similar as well. They have huge artist alley sections um, that you'd really feel like you're kind of getting in the middle of it all. Um, and I don't feel like you get that as much with the Supernova because it's mainly like half of their showroom is for getting signed pictures and um, autographs with celebrities. Mm. Like, why do I pay $60 a weekend to go and not see anyone? I will say, though, one of my favourite uh, convention experiences was at a supernova, because I'm pretty sure it was at Supernova. Uh, it was definitely at the showgrounds, but Weta was there for a while. Mm -hmm. They used to have a stall. And one year I went there and they had some of the designers and people who worked on Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, and they did like a panel. It was terribly placed. I've got to be honest. It was like, you know, that main hallway where you walk in before you mm -hmm. like turn? Mm -hmm. For some reason, they'd set up like a panel room in there where it was literally they just stuck up some dividers through half of the hall and then some chairs. Oh, no. 
that was very bad. But it was like that was until I went to Weta a couple of years ago, that was like the closest that I'd been to anything really Lord of the Rings, and I will never forget it. And somebody asked a question and I knew the answer. And I look, I didn't say anything. Like but they you asked knew. <laughs> Yeah, they asked the audience a question and I like whispered to Jimmy, I'm like, I know the answer to this, and I told her the answer. She's like, just fucking say it. I'm like, no. <laughs> But I knew the answer. <laughs> I think, like, but that is, that isn't necessarily a supernova experience, though. Like, I, but no. that, I guess it is, obviously. That yeah. is something that they brought there. But that is pr- kind of like why it's not my favorite is because the main draws aren't the convention. They're the people that are there, which obviously is a good thing, too. Getting good guests and things is also very mm. important. It's kind of what makes your show. But I don't know. It's just it's just why it doesn't rate very highly for me. Yeah. Um, but also, I don't know that there are a lot of... Though, in saying that... Oh, no, that was last Comic-Con, so that's completely different. Sorry if you Who saw that face saw? and you thought I was reacting to, to uh, Burroughs saying things. There was someone doing, like, a mini burnout, like, outside my house, but I don't think it was loud enough to be picked up to my microphone. I was just like... She she says that, but really it's secret messaging to you all who are watching along or listening along, and she's just like, help. Save me. <laughs> this lady's talking again. <laughs> um, but, uh, so, um, oh my goodness. My throat was just like, nah, fam. Uh, one of my coolest with like celebrity kind of moment because he had that with Weta was I actually went and met an author um I met well I met two of them actually uh th- two three uh, who people who make words <laughs> many people uh I met Kate Forsyth who's an Australian author who does one of uh my I'm gonna say one of my favorite book series but like it's I have a lot of favorite book series. Like it's not like the favorite, but it is definitely it's on the it's on the A tier or like S tier if you go in that far. Um, and I met when I met her, and it was great. Um, and I also met uh, another author, but it actually wasn't for me. I borrowed a book from a friend. Uh, the book was written by this other author. I can't even remember their name. That's a bad part. Um, <laughs> So I was like to my friend, I was like, oh, hey, can I like borrow your copy of whatever it was? Um, and then I took that book to with me to the convention and got it signed um, and then brought it back to her. Uh, at this same convention, I also, the voice actor for Pikachu was there uh, and I got a signed uh, picture for my cousin. So like that was... Again, contradicting myself because that is all the the famous people part of it. You know, like everybody the, will forget that you've like that that you're being that you're doing that if you don't bring it up. But Hopefully, it, maybe it was still. I think, like, I don't want to undermine the importance of like having relatable and good guests. It is still important. It's just not the only thing about a convention. If uh, Gideon Emery did a, did attend a Supernova, I'd probably, you know, be like, hey, Supernova is my favorite convention ever. Uh, anyway. <laughs> uh. I don't have a favorite, and I don't have a least favorite. I was going to say that Supernova was my least favorite. That is entirely based on location. If it was who hiccup anywhere else, mm. uh, I think it would be fantastic. Because they do a lot of things, I feel, that a lot of other conventions don't or didn't. Like, they had a couple of times, they had, like, a LARP group outside putting on a show. They mm-hmm. had wrestling. I think they did a lot of, cool, like, cool stuff. But they didn't put the focus on that. They put the focus on the celebrity stuff instead of the fun stuff that I actually liked. Um, not that I like wrestling. <laughs> I actually found that stage really annoyingly in the way all the time. If I liked wrestling, it would be really cool. <laughs> it was just something that other like other places weren't doing. Yeah, yeah. Is what I mean. Um, I really can't think of a favorite. I think it would probably be either Avcon or PAX. Mm-hmm. Because PAX has like the 
fun thing where I get to catch up with people, like with friends that are from other states. People don't really come into well, my friend group. People don't really come into state Afcon. I know that some people do, but that's I guess not so. really a thing. So PAX is like it's a big convention. It's a meeting place, and I get to see people that I don't get to see very often. But I'm a little bit different than you, where I don't really want to go into a gaming hall and play games with somebody that I've never met before. Oh, I don't go like, and play games with anyone I either. Have, I have trust issues. <laughs> uh, so I will go through the gaming hall one time, and be like, and not care. Like, I think three days for me is too long. Hmm. I mean, sometimes two days for me is too long. Sometimes I buy a weekend pass and I go a single day to a convention. Fair uh, enough. But, you know, I'm... What's the word? I think they, the, the, like, ambivert? Where you're very introverted, but you can pretend? I don't think, Sometimes I think that's still introverted. Yeah. It's just an Sometimes ambivert is someone who is last the whole weekend. introverted, that's but true. also extroverted. How is it? It's not Hello. pretending. <laughs> Sometimes I can only lie for one day in a weekend. I mean, that's fair, though. I just like the idea that it's so loud and such, I don't really need to talk to anyone. That's the thing that I like about some places, though. Like, it's it's loud and you can just kind of witness it rather than having to talk to people. That's why I like mm. them. Because I can just enjoy the spectacle without needing to be, like, a person. Yeah. What is that? Yeah, apparently you're listening to Spotify. Why? Mm. I didn't touch my phone. <laughs> so yeah. Maybe you said something that sounded like, hey, Google, I would <laughs> like to listen to music. Apparently, except Siri. <laughs> but Oh, right. I don't know. Very weird. Um, PAX does have the best selection of dice out of every convention that I've been to so far. I do like... Um, Honestly, it is terrifying. I would. I only do it when I desperately want to play something. the The TRPG section is pretty cool. Like I've played Call of Cthulhu there, and I've played uh, Pathfinder there as well. Um, it is much better when you have people that you actually know. But uh, as long as there's someone beside you, it's pretty cool. <laughs> nah, see, I could literally never. It could be a table full of if I knew all the players and still didn't know the DM, I could not do that. I can play like a new with new people online, but in a person like physical. Mm, yeah, I mean, fair enough. Absolutely not. Uh, so because I don't like you know interacting with real life people for more than a few seconds, that part of PAX is not my favorite. <laughs> I mean, fair enough. I don't know. The reason that I didn't have a ranking question is because I don't know if I feel I can't do it. I can't do it. That's fine. It's no worries. What do you reckon is your most standout convention experience aside from Weta? Oh, yeah, I did kind of already answer that, didn't I? It didn't happen. Oh, no, one of them happened in a convention. One of them happened right outside a convention. I went as Pennywise to a PAX walked out a door, scared a man who was at least six foot tall and made him scream. That made me really happy. Uh, and in the same costume, not very long after, somebody was like, hey, can I take a picture of like Pennywise and my baby? So they like kind of had the baby and they put the baby next to me and I was like, hello, baby. And the baby went, ah! uh, And that also made me very happy. But then immediately really sad because I love children and I was very upset that I'd scared a baby. But also somebody asked them, like, if they could put their baby in a picture with me. Nobody's ever done that before. Yeah. I really like cosplaying at conventions. I, I like the interactions with people when I'm not me. Mm -hmm. That's Get my that. favorite thing. But that's not specific to a single convention. That's just a convention thing in general. Yeah. What about yours? Uh, I mean, oh, God. Uh, convention experience. I don't know. Um, 
<laughs> See, I feel good about this. We mixed up the questions where I was surprised by your version of this question. Now you don't have an answer to my version of this question. I mean, I just don't have an answer. I'm not surprised. Well, I knew it was coming and I'm still like, I don't know what to think. Um, in terms of like favorite, I don't know. I just, I find conventions are a cool but exhausting time to not be yourself for a bit like it's as you said with like uh cosplay and just generally you know not interacting with people like yourself i also find that for conventions as well i tend to like dress like i would wouldn't normally like you know i wear a lot of makeup and i wear clothes that i wouldn't normally wear around and that kind of thing that I just feel more like not myself, uh, which makes things generally pretty easy or easier, not easy um, because it is exhausting. Uh, but I just, I just enjoy it. It's nice to go and just vibe. Uh, it was a really cool feeling to know that for my first panel for a convention, there were actually people that rocked up. That was cool. Um, you know, I'm not too sure how many except for uh, four people in the front actually came for me. Uh, hey, hey, but... <laughs> hey, there were more than four of us. We were like, there were like three <laughs> rows of people that were there for you. Uh, there were like two rows and there were two there rows were of like five. Rows. But <clears throat> it's just nice to see that. Like, I think we're, I'm so used to, to being online um, where you don't have like a reference for how many people are actually watching your stuff um and then to be in a room and be like there are actually some people here for me like it just was a very surreal thing uh, which isn't obviously specifically convention related but doing panels at a convention is just it's weirdly calming like i don't feel it doesn't feel like public speaking it feels kind of like streaming where it's like kind of exhilarating as opposed to like super nervy. I say that in hindsight, it definitely is pretty creepy at the time, but like generally it's all just a ride. And I don't know, I just really like running around convention halls and not talking to people for hours. Like I really like going around conventions when everyone's like, Oh, I'm tired and I want to go off and I'm like, cool, I'm going to go be by myself for, a couple hours. <laughs> but honestly, that's me all the time anyway. <laughs> it's not convention specific either. It's true. But yeah, conventions are cool and I can't wait for them to properly come back. Uh, or at least, like, when I say properly, like, have more options? I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. What? I feel like there was another question I can't remember. Uh, oh, are you remembering it? Well, I was going to ask, what is your favorite not convention that you would consider a convention? What the fuck does that mean? I mean, I was thinking of one very specific one, but... So you tell me yours so I can understand what the question is. <laughs> okay, so the not convention that feels like a convention would be, for me the medieval fair in Gamaraka because oh. it is generally somewhere where people meet and we convene, but it's just somewhere where you chill out and you just hang out with people and you go watch it and you go buy stuff and you talk to vendors, you talk to all sorts of different people. You go drink cider and just generally Potatoes have a good time. Yeah. I've actually never got a potato on a stick. I see them every year and I want one and I forget. <laughs> yeah, no, the Gumrack Medieval Fair is absolutely also my favorite. I've been going to that one for, I would say, oh, like eight years. Constantly trying to get other people to go with me. Um, it works a lot more these days. I don't think the making people come with me is actually a product of me trying to make people come with me it's just people i now am more interested in um yeah no the gum rack and medieval fair is my favorite anything of every everything ever it's always muddy and it's always gross and i'm not allowed to wear any makeup that doesn't make sense really without <laughs> context uh, 
<laughs> I go up there as part of the Ironclad Academy of the Sword. And so we dress historically accurate and you don't wear makeup and stuff. I put on foundation because it sticks on my face for slightly longer than sunscreen. And then I put sunscreen over the top. Double layers of protection. But, like, I don't get to do my eyebrows and I don't do, like, my makeup. And I get to be kind of ugly. Not ugly. I get to be, like, baseline. I get to... <laughs> like, when you go Mel's to like, a... like, I'm kind of ugly, and I'm, like, convention. sitting here with no makeup on, just like, yeah, mmm. <laughs> wow. No, I anyway. just mean, when you go to, like, a convention, you're uh -huh. usually, like, fake eyelashes and, like, lipstick and a wig. And I'm, like, I don't even have to brush my hair because I'm sticking it into a cap and wearing a veil. Like, it's very freeing. Mm. Nobody's ever hit on me at a medieval fair. Honestly, I don't really feel like that would be the place to hit on someone. But oh, I no, mean, no, no. I guess I can be wrong. Whack someone with a stick. Yeah, a big Excuse one. Me? I'm going to just pull this burning thing out of the fire. What, what the fuck did you say to me? Yeah. yeah, but that's happening soon. I'm very excited about that. It's also nice to just get out and into greenery for a bit, like, yeah, uh, like kind of purposefully. And just see people doing stuff that's, like, very, like, you know, like, um, uh, seeing people, like, weaving and doing calligraphy and general, like, crafty things and stuff and just generally enjoying themselves doing things that they wouldn't normally be doing outside is a lot of fun. I've only been there, I think, twice now. Um, I actually didn't know it existed. I didn't know that anything existed past anything for a very long time <laughs> so i'm still learning the magic of these things but it's still a really good time and i highly suggest for anyone who's listening along and you have something like that in your area go find a friend and go check it out because sometimes these things can be really surprising um because like i would be incredibly too shy if no one had like if i was going on my own I would not go to something like that because I am a shy, introverted person. But find people to take with you or, or even just going by yourself but safely um, <laughs> is, is still a good time as well. You get to go and experience new things you wouldn't necessarily do any other time. And you don't have to be massively into like medieval whatever or LARP or anything like that. I think Leon described it to me one time as, I'm not surprised that you like going to the medieval fair because everybody there is either a huge fucking nerd or like a goth. Because that's what you see. You see people dressed in medieval stuff and then for some reason you see people in the chains and the platform boots and all black and occasionally the corpse paint and makeup. Um, target audiences, apparently nerds and goths. Metalheads. Pirates. There are a decent amount of pirates. Oh, I want to be a pirate. Steampunk people. Steampunk people, weirdly. Uh, and there's always at least one person dressed as the doctor from Doctor Who who's pretending that it's an actual real-life medieval experience. Mm. But, I mean, still cool. Yeah, to each their own. Yeah. Like, you know... I think it's it's cool to go to events where, like, there are there's a possibility of meeting like-minded people. Uh, even if you don't yeah. actually necessarily meet them, it's just nice to be around people. Like, I will absolutely not talk to strangers in these events. But, like, it's nice to just kind of see people around and, like, be a part of the atmosphere. Yes. Which was kind of what I was trying to get. I think I entirely missed my own point there. <laughs> um, <laughs> what I was trying to say is it's much like a convention. People go there for a whole load of different reasons. You don't have to be like, oh, I don't know anything about medieval England in like the 13 to 1500s. If you have any kind of interest in anything nerdy, you'll probably find something that you like at medieval fair. And also not to mention that like, there are a lot of things there that they don't, belittle you for it it's not a place where like they're you know oh you don't know the difference between like your crushed velvet and your fucking actually historically accurate dresses they might joke about that but like <laughs> 
It's, you know, just I a mean, place where you can I chill and hang out. Keep crushed velvet a hundred yards away from me at all times. It is my least favorite fabric. Not just, like, not for medieval stuff, just in general. I own, like, two velvet dresses. I've worn each of them, like, once, and then I put them in my cupboard and I go, why did I buy that? I fucking hate velvet. Yeah, anyway. that is also a problem with manufacturers, though. Like, a lot of the, the medieval costumes that you can buy are all made of crushed velvet, which is not the fault of the consumer. No one no. looks at crushed velvet and is like, I'm going to buy that. Mm. <laughs> like, as in a crushed velvet on its own. If it's a costume, sure. But, yeah, like, it's it just Mel will judge you. So just don't go to a convention where Mel is and you're fine. A convention. That's uh, generally fair, fair. good advice. <laughs> Stay away from me. I'm a terrible person. <laughs> no, stay away from you when you're wearing crushed velvet, you goose. No, at all times. Uh, I mean, yeah, she doesn't want you to be near you, but it's whatever. Um, I, I will say hi, That, but that's really it. Um, oh, oh, is that weird? going back to the very beginning, who was doing all the helloing when you were at your table at the convention? It was me. I was making first contact. You know why I wasn't doing that. Because I like to do the whole smile and eye contact thing. You were like, you have to say hello because that will guilt people into buying something. And that is not how I want to operate. Ha. Anyway, donate to send Burroughs to business school where they'll tell her everything I already told her for free. I did do a business course and nowhere in that did they say anything about that. And also, I do understand anti-theft. I have worked in retail. Mm. Like, for quite a few years. In fact, I, <laughs> to go on a slight tangent, it's literally my favorite story about working in fucking retail. I just, I have to go on a tangent for this. It's just, it just makes me laugh. Um, one time, I caught someone shoplifting in a shop. So I went to the duty manager or like manager on duty and told her about it. And she was like, well, we can't really do anything about it because we're not allowed to like touch their stuff or whatever, but we can like, you know, I, I got this, I got this. And she was the coolest fucking person ever. I swear to God. So I pointed out who it was. Then I was just going back to, cause I, this was in my particular section of the store. And here I was thinking like, Oh yeah, I should just trail her for a bit. See what happens. You know, maybe do like a bag check on the way out or something. no, um, they're in an aisle and this person was like maybe halfway up the aisle. And so the manager on duty goes to the front of the aisle. So this was an aisle that backed onto essentially another aisle that would have meant that they had to go like further into more aisles. Um, she stood in the middle of the entrance to that aisle, hands behind her back, legs spread and just fucking glared at this lady. Like, not subtle in the slightest, to the point that she just, like, kept looking at her, and then she'd move, and then she just moved further down the aisle. And I was just like, oh, God, what is happening here? To the point that she did it for the entire bit of the store until the lady, like, turned a corner and, like, got rid of the thing and then walked off. And then she was, like, right, writing them down for later, looking at the security cameras. I'm like, that was aggressive <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's just one of my favorite things but uh yes so i do understand why you do it but also i have eyeballs so <laughs> you don't build relationships with eyeballs i build relationships with eyeballs if i catch eye contact with someone and i smile at them and then do the whole like you only had the couple of seconds and then you look away that is connection. No, I'm not sitting there going, on. hello. I wasn't sitting there going, hello. I said, I'm not. Not no. you or not. I wasn't calling you out. No, I'm calling you out. I was. Hello. Oh, darling. Um... I can't think of any more convention questions. I mean, I don't think there's anything overly that is really to be said. It's just exciting that conventions are coming back even at a limited capacity. Uh, I think it'll be interesting to see 
how that looks like over the next couple of months, especially with now that, um, uh, like Australia is handling, handling obviously the pandemic much differently to a lot of other places, but that does also mean that you don't get the traffic from the other people from other places. So it'll be interesting to see what these conventions look like over the next 12 months um, and see how they adjust to that. Uh, so support your local conventions guys. Uh, if you happen to be around, um, obviously do it safely though. Uh, you have plenty of options, uh, for doing that, but generally social distancing and personal hygiene, <laughs> like, you oh, know, just personal hygiene. I think that's generally just good con and uh, <laughs> advice anyway. Um, but yeah. And also just remember that it gets fucking hot in these places. So like, no matter what you do, wear 10 pounds of deodorant, like just, so much just an entire stick under each arm because like maybe not that much you'll get all flaky it will be like you have dandruff from under your arms i don't get dandruff from under my arms from like a stick well the stick builds up like if it's a would you mean like a powder one or like liquid one like i was thinking a liquid one the, uh, the creamy stuff builds up and flakes. Oh, I don't think I've ever used a creamy one. But honestly, I sometimes will struggle with, uh, like, uh, liquidy ones. So maybe a cream one is what I need. Mm. Uh, we'll talk about this when we end stream, but <laughs> I have much to say about deodorant. Uh, I was going to say also support your Gummeraka Medieval Fair, and I was going to give you the dates, but apparently I haven't sold it in my, saved it in my calendar. It's in, like, the end of April the first, or the beginning of May. The first weekend of May, because it's always on Mother's Day. Yeah, but I wasn't sure weekend. if it was the same this year, because everything was fucked up. No, I'm pretty sure we looked it up, uh, and it was, like, the 4th of May or something. Anyway, um, we'll find out when that is, and you should come, and you should meet us. It'll be great. If you if you are in Adelaide and SA, that is. Well, yes. Or if you can safely travel, it's genuinely, I think it would be worth it. Yeah. Yeah, that's it also fair too. one of my favorite things. Yeah, you can... They have Highland cows. Yeah. I have no idea how much I love those fucking animals. I just want to be able to shoot a bow. I'm honestly cursed when it comes to archery. We'll, 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 hopefully, oh, that was Barossa. The Barossa medieval fairhead archery. Yeah, we'll and then it cancelled. We'll, we'll get you to the th- Yeah, I hit my arm with the string before it got cancelled. And I had a huge fucking bruise. <laughs> and I did archery for like three or four years. And I still fucked myself up. Anyway. Uh, this has been the Mellow Podcast with me. Who is? Mel. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like somebody mentioned recently they think it's really funny that i can never seem to remember what part of the podcast my name is and i was like i'm gonna get it right this time and i still fucking fucked it up (laughs) i'm maleficent (laughs) i'm the brains of the operation obviously (laughs) clearly clearly I'm anyway, I'm the Leficent. Burrows. I'm the pain part of the podcast being the owl part of Mellow. Oh, I was like, brains and pain? I didn't realize they were the <laughs> Brains opposite. and brawn, you know? Like, I bring the pain, you bring the... Brain, but not in my own. Somebody else's, like, in a jar. I mean, it's very you. It's also very mercy and deliverance. Maybe D and D can be our new thing that we mention for every episode. Anyway, <laughs> thank you for joining us on our podcast adventure. Sorry, we had such a long break. We can't promise it won't happen again. Yeah, absolutely not. You'll just have to keep up in our discords for regular updates. Bug us in there, or don't, or do. I say do. She says Bug don't. Us. See, Bug her. Hers. I'm the devil, she's the angel. Who are you going to go with? This is your real decisions right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Look, I've even got the red background. Like, it all works. Or maybe. <laughs> you just don't want to not be the devil. This is the longest outro ever. Yeah, yeah. Maybe this is like an <laughs> Ariana and an Eminence thing where Eminence is like, I'm evil, I'm trying so hard. I'm telling you to bug us. And you're saying not to. Yes.
we could have a whole podcast episode on this whole dynamic here, couldn't we? But don't forget, <laughs> we aren't happy I mean, that, that you're wrong. Which is happened to be right. That dynamic was basically the reason we started the podcast, honestly. So it's a good thing we're arguing at the end of it. Otherwise, you know, people would have missed out. <laughs> <laughs> actually i'm not gonna finish that thought i'm gonna finish that thought we're back in call um but yes so yeah outtake done 